Good morning, everyone. How are you all today? Thank you. Okay, so it is our October community meeting today. We have a couple people that are not at our building today. Norm is not here. So I'm starting off the meeting in his place, but we will go ahead and have George from our marketing team come on up first. Good morning, everyone. All right. So most of you know me, but some do not. I'm George. I'm the moving coordinator for the sales and marketing team. Just a few stats that we have, right? So for September, I'm pleased to announce that we have 12, we had 12 new move-ins. So for October this month, we are on track for 14. So that's 26. So that's a good, that's a good stat, right? Um, we did have seven move outs, but those seven were because of unfortunate passings and, you know, short term, you know, short term rentals. Okay. So, and I'm also excited to share with you that amongst those who are coming to live in our community are accomplished scholars, educators, okay, and authors. So they're going to have a lot to contribute to the society and we will all be enriched by their expertise, right? So that's a really good thing. Um, I just want to end by saying that, you know, one of the reasons that there are three real reasons um, our residents who have recently moved in are extremely happy here, right? One, of course, is the dedicated staff. The staff is, is, is always at the beck and call of, of each one of us when each one of you when you need them. OK, and of course, the services that we offer, everyone's happy with that. But the third uh, component, I spent a lot of time with, you know, these new residents. And the third thing that they all seem to love are the residents. So we owe it to you. Uh, congratulations to you for making them feel welcome. Um, and, uh, you know, you socialize with them, you eat with them and they feel part of this community. So that was one of the reasons, you know, that they enjoy being here so much. So, so thank you to all of you, you know, for being, for being so welcoming for, for these new residents, right? They're all part of this vibrant community. We're growing, we're thriving, and, uh, you know, you all play a critical uh, role in that. So you deserve all the credit in the world. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Have a great day. morning. Um, I'm going to be a couple people today because I have uh, those that weren't aren't able to be here today. I have their um, information to share. So first, I'm going to be Norm. Be kind. Uh, first, on recruitment, we are diligently working on recruiting for dining room staff. Uh, we do have several starting. I know that you've seen several that had started this last month. Um, so we have an orientation on this Thursday, October 27th, so we do have a couple folks coming for the dining room uh, for this orientation. We're also continuing interviews for plant operations director and um, dining room manager. Um, so there were some questions that were raised to Norm regarding dining room manager, um, di answering to the dining room management. Um, so for interviews, Robert Wilson, who you'll meet shortly, is the um, HR manager. He's going to be conducting the interviews for the dining room services. Um, the interdisciplinary team, leadership team, will interview for the dining room manager. Dining room concerns, comments, and questions during this time until we have a dining room manager can be directed to Antonio. Training of all dining room staff is a multifaceted uh, and includes a lot of different parts and pieces to their training. Um, but once when they start with general orientation, uh, orientation is where the staff meet all of the directors. So all of us have a component when someone starts and they go through orientation, all the management team gets together, meets with them. Um, we cover the disciplines covering customer service, 
um, dining room service, um, Antonio and or the dining room manager, once that person is hired, will conduct this, the training for senior lifestyle time to shine training, which is actual server training that they have. And then there's an or there's a process that that um, new hiree will go through over a time period in which they become a proficient server. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Robert Wilson, our HR manager. Thank you, Christina. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Wilson. I'm the HR manager. For HR, we typically deal with employee relations, employee benefits, payroll, staffing, and things of that nature. Um, a couple things about myself. I'm um, from Chicago, Illinois, uh, west side of Chicago. Um, spent eight years in the Air Force after that. Did, uh, did a lot of study in the University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana. Um, outside of that, um, for my hobbies, I like distance running. I ran a few marathons. Um, I like to work out, like to read, um, and hang out with friends and family. And it's, uh, it's great to meet you all. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Um, I really can't answer questions about recruitment because I don't really handle that, and um, Norm didn't provide it on my sheet. Um, so next, I'm going to be plant operations. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, so the hallway renovations began a couple weeks ago, and um, we're waiting delivery of carpet from th for the next five floors. So whatever the next five floors are, as soon as we receive the carpet, that's when they'll schedule them, and that's when uh, you'll be notified if you live on those five floors. So I don't know what date that's going to start, um, but as soon as we know, I'll let everyone else know. Um, there's going to be a necessary water shutdown tonight from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., and everybody should have received that memo. No. Oh, you know what? No, the memo's going out today. You're going to get it on your door when you get back home. Is it for everybody or just this? Yes, one? everyone. What are, the, what are the times again? 8 p.m. tonight to 6 a.m. Um, the dining room carpet cleaning, that one did go out last night. Yes. Um, and it's going to be at the evenings of Wednesday and Thursday overnight. They're going to start after 8 p.m., um, but we're going to shut everything down in the dining room and suburbs area by the fireplace and everything so that we can move furniture and all that. Um, and then once all the carpet's cleaned and everything, the new chair sliders will be, will be replaced. So that'll be a process once the carpet's cleaned. Um, the next thing that's up on to be done is the garage lighting, updating, and restriping. And once we know the dates on all of that, I will get that a memo out to everyone. That will include retagging and relocating and cleaning up of the two of the bicycles on the second floor. So if you have a bike that you store on the second floor, make sure that you have a tag on there that has your name and apartment number in there for all bicycles stored on the second floor. Is there somewhere we can get these tags? Yeah, let me know. Contact me and I'll make sure you get a bicycle tag. Miliana. That I can't tell you. It's not on my sheet. Um, smoking in front of the building will be moved effective date, doesn't say, um, but there will be more information to follow. They are waiting on a purchase and installation of a patio shelter for the third floor. So that's all the information I have on plot, plant operations. Yes. Um, we're on the week four renovation. Um, you know, I walked around the hall. Okay. Um, are the hall fixtures going to be ripped back up? Because I think people identify the so the question was, are the pictures going to be hung back up once the floors are renovated? I don't know, but that was a question I asked yesterday. So as soon as I get an answer, I'll let everyone know. Um, I'm sure there'll be something, but I don't know exactly what. I think at this point, 
I ever knew that point that continuation, and I know a lot of people, I, you know, when they get out of the elevator, they need to share the scripture instead of hot wine. Yeah, a lot of people use that photo as a, as a point of reference. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I agree. So, I, I'm and sure. I know I'm for life, mm -hmm. And I don't think there's plans for me. Anyway. Yeah, I'm not the interior decorator, so I couldn't say for sure, but I'm sure there'll be something because that is a large blank space. There are, um, hand, I keep calling chair railings, but handrails yeah. are going to be replaced. Yes. Yeah, those are coming. Once the painting is all complete, the handrails will be replaced. Yeah. But the pictures, I, I did ask that yesterday and I haven't gotten an answer back yet, but I, I'm looking into that for sure. Yes. So Miliana's pointing out that on the floors that they're renovating, the chairs have been removed and not been replaced. They should be replaced. The same chairs at this point should be placed back there once you're done with the carpet. I'll look into those floors that they haven't been replaced because they're supposed to put them back. I did go to a couple of the floors yesterday, but I'll look and see which ones those are that are still missing. Yes. I think part of the problem is not that they're not put back when they're done, but while they're working, there's nothing there. Mm, yeah. Okay. And you know, you can't really stand and wait for the elevator to come. I'll check with them for both replacing after and then while they're working. Yes. Of the chairs on the tenth floor of Derby, will they clean the chairs before they put them back? <coughs> the, Priscilla asked if they were going to clean the chairs once they put them back. I don't know about cleaning them. I don't know if they're going to put the same chairs back permanent. I, I'm not sure for so, but I'll, I'll find out what's going to happen with chairs then. Okay, so that was my plan operations. Now I'm going to be Antonio, but I only have one announcement. Well, two. Um, the menu chat is going to be scheduled for November 16th at 11.30 a.m. in the showroom. So menu chat 11.16 here in the showroom. And there's going to be a Thanksgiving brunch, and there'll be more information to follow about the Thanksgiving brunch. You'll get a memo for that. So last but not least, oh, yes, Clarice. We were told that um, at a menu chat that if people wanted a larger portion or whatever, they could ask the server for that. And yes, uh, some people have done that and been told that larger portions are not being served. So we've been working on this with staff. One of the problems was is people were asking for larger portions and then taking half of that large portion and putting it in a to-go container before they even ate and taking it back to their apartment. The resident had food to be carried out of the dining room. So you can you can have what you can eat in the dining room. If you finish what you have, you can have a second but you cannot take food from the dining room. So you can't order two portions and take one with you. Okay, so even if you know that, you, that you're going to want a larger amount at the dinner, you have to take it to the evening first. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I didn't, and I think the other, it's going to probably be harder because some of us need smaller portions because we can't finish it. And I don't want to cook. So we are, we have been cooking like that. Also, um, I want to leave a particular piece down, so I usually end up taking the bread bag and leaving it up. So I, I don't understand what's going to happen. The, the breakfast buffet, I can understand, so you don't load up on everything you order. And if you get served, the question is, you don't have to. This is a, it's a very... Some of the problems because I don't want it thrown out. That doesn't seem right. Okay. 
I'm, I'm going to work with Antonio on getting this clarified and getting something out to everyone because if we're going to go back, like I have, it's not enough, it's too much. So we're going to clarify it with everyone and you'll get some information regarding, you know, portions and, the, but you're not permitted. We can't do seconds where you're taking a second portion with you. So we'll, I'll get clarification and, and we're working with staff to make sure that they understand um, for individuals who want a second of whatever it is that they are asking seconds for. But we're, we'll, I'll work with Antonio to make sure that that's clarified with staff. Even here, I think it's that what Juan is saying is about the first portion. If you don't finish your first portion, portion you are able to take it. But you can't right. send for the second. Right. Right. So we'll we'll work with Antonio and we'll make sure that that's clarified about what you can and what you can't take out. Okay. Because I think this, we could just go for you know a lot of questions with this, Jerry. I was scheduled. I didn't select that time, but I thought you should be the important one. And I, I use that as my lunch. And I take the half, other half of my meal uh, upstairs, and I eat it around 6 o'clock like dinner. So I hope that they don't change that. Mm -hmm. I didn't select 245 for my dinner. That was selected for me. So seating times is going to be a different discussion. But I can talk with you about that. Mr. Farber. Um, this happened though, you mean, uh, one of the guests came in at uh, about 5 minutes to 6. The waiter refused to serve. He said, serving time is only for 545. Everybody at the table pointed out that all of our Christmas dinner was at 6 o'clock. He said, we closed, we stopped serving at 545. That's it, end of story. Wow. I'll, I'll meet with you to find out afterwards. If you guys didn't know this, Mr. Farber and I went to the same high school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Ross. Yeah, quick, quickly, if I can. It's regarding the doctor that we used to have, the geriatric doctor, Rajat uh, Indigar. Mm -hmm. Is he still with us or he left? I'm looking into that currently. I've reached out to him and I'm waiting for a response. The reason I asked. I was using this doctor, <coughs> and it's something that is a good knowledge for everybody. I was using this doctor, and I think that the, it's, the, it's removed from the TV. It used to be on the TV. It's, uh, you know, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used that doctor maybe three, four times. I have a charge for like close to 10000 Okay, we can talk about we can talk about that. Just something I'm discussing with the medical. Second is the reason I believe it was because, and I don't know if it's going to be again because that looks like a scam. Once he has an Instabox company so that he looks like he owns or the, the manager or something, which it was the shop for the uh, COVID ones, so the Instabox that was it. Mm -hmm. Then he, we have a second uh, uh, shot that he didn't participate, but it was for in, from Inaga, which is his name. Mm -hmm. So he twice submitted the shot from his company or something. Then it looks like he disappeared now because I called maybe, I would say, six, seven times. The only time that he asked me that he has the office down to the south side of Illinois, it's, he told me over the phone, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't see you anymore because I had a COVID. I never hear any more from me, but it's a bad news. And I tell you clear, honestly, I could be more clear, but let's take a real anybody who needs some more information, I can give it to you. Okay, I... I you look your Medicare, the chances that you may have, and we have the Instabox, um... So, Mr. Mr. Rossi, you and I can talk after. Hopefully I'm looking into having, if if Dr. Iyengar is still going to be coming to the building. If you need a, a physician to go see and you have questions or want to go see a physician that you don't have one assigned to you or want to switch to someone closer, let me know. We do have other resources other than um, other than Dr. Iyengar, if you want to choose. If I may, 
Okay, Mr. Rossi, I want to keep moving because I still have other people and I have to finish what I have for myself. But, okay, but we can, we can, you and I can meet, but that's about your information. So we can meet privately. So I have, I have other questions. Joe, you had a question? If you and if you have if, if you have staff because we're, it's training staff so and if you have someone that says that you cannot you can always talk to one of the dining room supervisors Erlene Sean Vicky you can always talk to one of them and they will help that dining room staff we have to admit they're young kids and they don't if you tell them no people can't have double or can't have second portions they don't understand that you're going to eat that there so it's just working with the staff so we're working on it so if that happens talk to a dining room supervisor but yes you you can. Part of the resident handbook it says that you're not permitted to take food from the diner but it's always been in there so we're we're enforcing that i don't we're, ju we're just enforcing it so is there any other questions from dining Mr. Rossi complimented Molly on the memorial service yesterday, that she did a wonderful job uh, with the memorial service yesterday. Thank you, Molly. All right, so then on to my own portion. Um, I am Christina, Director of Hospitality and Resident Services. Um, so the Breaker School of Lifelong Learning, it's our last um, Chicago Legal Aid. It's this Thursday, October 27th. Um, the lawyer from Chicago Legal Aid is going to come talk about identity theft, how to protect yourself. This is a very big season where for donations. So this, she's going to talk about how to be safe and know which um, organizations and how to you know research and know which ones are safe to donate to. Uh, most of you have turned in your uh, flu shot um, vaccination form. If you haven't, I can still take those. The flu shot vaccination is on Monday, I mean, Tuesday, November 1st. Uh, Mariano's is going to be here in the showroom to do the vaccinations, and you're going to get a schedule of what time your um, floor is scheduled for. Um, the memos will go out tonight. Um, November 8th, we are an election voting site, so you'll be able to vote downstairs right in the suburbs. Um, the floor meetings for, for November, I don't know, yes, for November 3rd, floor meetings. For the 24th and 25th floor, the, they're scheduled in the Marine Room, um, are going to be canceled for November 3rd. Uh, my daughter's being induced on November 2nd, unless she has a baby before then. Um, but right now we're planning on her being induced on November 2nd, so I won't be here. 
I'll be in Philadelphia, so. Yeah. But I'm going to reschedule them, so anybody who lives on the 24th or 25th floor, they'll get a notice on them being rescheduled. Does anyone have questions for me? Clarice. Um, uh, you're having the uh, person come and talk about identity theft, but there was there were issues brought up about uh, small items being taken from the common areas. And my understanding was that we were going to have somebody from the police department to talk about uh, about any incidences of theft uh, that may occur, how to report it, and so forth. Is that still going to occur, or is that going to happen? Clarice is talking about having the police liaison, the senior police liaison coming from the Chicago Police Department. We're still coordinating dates. It's very difficult to coordinate dates in November with him, so I'm still working on it. It may be November, December. I'm still having him come out. As soon as I have a date, he'll be plugged in, but it's Great. working on dates. Yeah, I've heard that you're no longer doing COVID testing here. Yes, we're in, correct. COVID testing, we're not doing COVID testing here anymore because the lab will not come out for one individual. Well, I think it's the bond someone else or something. Because here's the problem. The senior here, he may not, I mean, some of these tests, each kid is different. Mm -hmm. And it gets confusing. And it's not that it's a rocket science, but you're there are people who want to be tested. But is there anybody to come and come to find the way they want to? I mean, something, somebody from, I know management, but can't somebody help them out? Because what are you going to do, send them out? They don't know how to take care of them without being killed. Right. So Rona's asking, because we're no longer, I don't have a lab that will come here and do COVID testing for one or two individuals. They only want to come if I'm doing a mass testing. Um, I'm working on finding someone. I was trying to work with them to have them come out and test two or three people this week. And they said, unless I'm doing mass testing, the lab refuses to come out. Um, so I'm working on finding another lab that will come out. I'm not giving up hope. So I'm still working on trying to find someone, even if it's, you know, they come out every Wednesday or whatever. I'm trying to find someone who will come out and do that. So it's, I haven't given up hope, but I did change the screen on the um, touch town so that people know I can't schedule someone to come to your apartment and do that. Yeah. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, the flu vaccine on Tuesday. I just want to verify again. That is the senior vaccine for anyone over 65. It's a stronger, more potent. Yeah, the flu vaccine that seniors or that all of you will get, um, residents will receive is the high dose quadrivalent, something like that it's called. Yes, it's the high I know senior it's dose. Advertised yeah. over 65. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the over 65 vaccine. Anyone under like staff that are getting it is not that one. Yes. On the COVID testing, what I heard Roman say, was I hadn't thought about before, but I thought was a really good idea, is even if people just have the at-home rapid test, it's very hard to figure out how to do them if you've never looked at them before. And the people come out the mm -hmm. day, if there's anybody, and I know you don't want to assign somebody to go in an apartment with someone who thinks they have COVID, but if there's somebody who can help them even figure out how to do that and maybe have some rapid tests available, yeah, I'm working on getting someone who can come and actually do it. I had to do one last week, and I had to do it before I go see my daughter in the hospital, but I can't read the one I, they sent me. So I had to take a picture of it with my phone and then enlarge it because I can't read the writing either. It's hard, and they're all different. So I, I'm working on getting someone, if I work with concierge or with home health care, someone who can actually help, come and help. Miliana. That I don't know about because that's not my vaccine. The question was about a flu vaccine being given on the first floor. I don't know. I don't have any information about that. That's not anything I passed out. The only thing I know about is about the flu vaccine on the first here. She's saying that some something was given to residents about a flu shot being given on Fridays on the first floor. I don't have any information about that. That's not anything that's 
the breakers is given out. So I don't, if it's not from me, I can't answer that. I don't have any information about it. Anything else? No, that's not that those that flu shot is not from him at all. The one being given out on Friday is not that that's not his. All right. Thank you. Thank all three of you. I'm the business office manager. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, we did add to the front desk staff. Um, so if you see our newest member, Ofri, uh, please give her a warm welcome. She'll be helping out on the weekends, um, generally in either the 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. or the 3 p.m. to 11 shift. So please, please make her feel welcome. Um, I'm getting a number of calls, particularly this month, about discrepancies on invoices. Um, I would ask that, and in, in the interest of kind of streamlining the investigation of any of the discrepancies, that you bring a copy of your statement to the front desk and allow them to make a photocopy, and then circle and make notes on your statement about just that you're disputing. Um, and again, uh, you can also reach out to Antonio. Most of these, um, the, most of the questions for dining room. Please don't call me multiple times. I get your message. I've been inundated with messages. Um, I need time to review them. So it really doesn't make sense for me to call you and let me know that I got your phone call and I need to review it. So I think the better practice would really be to allow the front desk to make a copy of your statement and you uh, go ahead and make notes, circle the charges, and allow me an opportunity so that we can verify whether or not the charge is accurate. Um, and that is also really the, my preference when you have any, any discrepancies with your statement that you would like me to review. Um, you can call me, but please don't call me multiple times. Um, and then the exciting news, um, for the month of November, we will be having wine club. However, we will just delay it until after Thanksgiving. So wine club for November will be delayed one month, or oh, excuse me, one week. And we will have wine club on December 1st, which is the very first Thursday following Thanksgiving. So everyone can enjoy the holiday with their family. Any questions for me? All right, have a great day. Okay, hello again. I am Molly Rodriguez. I'm the Director of Resident Programming and I have a list to talk to you about. So following up on something that was asked at the last community meeting about the DMV. The DMV comes to the breakers once a year. Some people have asked for them to come back out in June. They said no. They said, no. They they said, said once, once a year. year. And so, so you know, it's, it's very wonderful that they come out that, that once a year already and set up shop here for a whole day. And, and so I think they, they just have so many communities they go to that, that they can't repeat communities. So the DMV will come out again, probably at the beginning of summer, May, June, July time. They cannot do real IDs at our community. They cannot do real IDs at our community. That's the number one question we get. They always say no. It's a secure system. It has to be done at their facility. I will also add, I have asked, can I schedule a two-hour block where I bring the bus residents for the real ID? They said no. So the DMV, you know how the DMV is? Maybe one day once the real ID is rolling out a little bit easier, then we'll be able to do something like that. I will keep asking to see if there's a loophole, some way we can get real IDs for those of you that are looking to get them instead of waiting at the DMV yourself. So 
on to some upcoming trips. Shantae has a wonderful November plans for you all. November 2nd, we're going to Haiti at the Russian Tea House. November 9th, to the Casino and Outlet Mall. The 16th, we're back at Lyric Opera. The 23rd is right before Thanksgiving, so Shantae will be off and Sterling will be doing some scenic drives with you all. He gets a wonderful tour around Chicago, so he'll have two times for you all to enjoy. And then November 30th, we'll be taking a tour of the Rookery downtown and then also going to Misericordia, two separate trips. Um, some other things in programming. Our candy fundraiser that we did for Tree we raised, or collected, I should say, 80 pounds of candy. 80 pounds of candy. So please, I can't forget. That is a lot, a lot of candy. I actually received more candy today that was not a part of that 80 pounds. I have a good pound or two from Steve so all that candy gets shipped out to Texas where they make Halloween baskets and little care packages that they go overseas. And so thank you for everybody that brought candy for that fundraiser. We have chocolate day this Friday, if you all have seen. So we're having some fun food holidays and we had our banana split ice cream social. Now we're having chocolate day on Friday. Where we'll have hot chocolate with all the different toppings for you to choose from, some brownies and other goodies. Um, if you haven't been on the first floor, I don't know how, but we have our pumpkin display down there by all the staff members. I invite you all to vote for your favorite pumpkin down on the first floor. People worked very hard on them. There's some really cute ones down there. We are having our turkey trot, our third annual turkey trot. Tuesday, November 22nd. Everyone is welcome to participate. You don't have to sign up to participate. If you would like a t-shirt, please sign up for that in the back. We custom make our t-shirts every year. We have to order them ahead of time. So if you would like a t-shirt, please sign up outside of the showroom just so I can get those ordered. They are $18 a piece. If we order more than 20, then I think it drops down a dollar. 20 more drops down a dollar again, so they get cheaper the more we get. But the starting price is $18. We have a group of residents here directed by Mary Reinhardt that are putting on a play here at the Breakers on November 9th, so something to look forward to. Uh, one thing I want to touch on towards the middle, just a little bit of a sour note, I just want to bring up that Sometimes at the programming, we have other people that will come in and leave programming and maybe be different than the regular person for that programming. And I ask that everybody treat that substitute with respect. We have had a couple cases in the past week or so where somebody has been filling in for a program, not the normal person, but has been treated not with respect. I know. That's, That's how I felt, felt too, so I'm addressing it with everybody involved. But I just ask, you know, sometimes people will lead a program differently. Just be flexible. Try it in a new way. Be respectful to everyone. Okay, back to the good stuff. For 11th, we are having a Veterans Day celebration here in the showroom. We are going to have our veterans do the show and tell again that they have asked to hold we will have beer, we will have root beer, we will have snacks, have a nice big celebration for Veterans Day. Also, along with Veterans Day, we have a couple of different presentations that will take place. On November 6th, Matt and Zinnabia, who I think are our favorite performers at the Breakers, I see some nods out in the crowds there. They are going to be doing a special World War radio performance. Excuse me there. So that will be on Sunday, November 6th. November 16th, we will have a presentation about a book called Molly's War. I think they had come out maybe seven years ago, so good to have them come out again. It's about a veteran who I believe she's 99 now. Her and her daughter come out and talk about the women's army before. And so very interesting presentation. They also have the book if you want to buy the book, but the presentation is fabulous. Um, it's a book about somebody that was in the Women's Army Corps. Yes. 
And then the last piece of good news is the Chicago Public Library is starting to lead book clubs again at the Breakers. I'm very excited about that. So we have somebody that will come out on December 6th and lead the book club. If you would like to be a part of the book club, please sign up outside of the showroom because she will drop off about 30 books ahead of time in the beginning of November. And then you have about a month to read the book. There is no charge for this book club. It is a library book, though. So if you sign up, you are responsible for that library book. If it does not get returned to me, you are responsible for replacing that library book. Okay, does anybody have questions about programming transportation, Joe? Yes. Thank you, Joe. So, thanks, Joe. Um, Joe had mentioned. Thank you. So, one of our residents here at Breakers, one of our veterans, Bob Berger, he went on an honor flight last week. And so, we had a bus of staff and residents that went to Midway Airport at 9 o'clock at night, surprised Bob, and brought him home. And it was a lovely, lovely time. We were all very honored to be a part of his return home. And just glad, glad to, to be able, able to celebrate So thank, thank you, Joe. Thanks, thanks for going, going with us. Okay, anything else about programming and transportation? Clarice. I would just like to come in and be all awesome. oh, goodness. Well, <laughs> about all of the things going on. I'm, I'm in Florida. You know, oh. All of those things that I'm Thank you, Clarice. You all are making me blush up here. Clarice said uh, she loves to hear about all going on and complimented myself, Sterling Shante. We definitely have a wonderful team. Cannot do this with just one person. So grateful for our team. But a part of that I'd also just like to add. Dining plays a big part, maintenance plays a big part, but all the breakers work together. You all see how many different ways the showroom is set up during the day. Maintenance helps out so much with that, dining with our food, all of our volunteers helping out. So even in programming, we cannot do it without the support of the other departments. Tuana. The other problem I have is that it is low in the dining room. And I think they do the same now in the breakfast. But it's with a few different in the atmosphere of breakfast. You know, I, I like to use the stars in there and watch the scenery. And if you're just coming in and you get a different rhythm, it's a story model, it's going to be all the way. Um, if they do need the radio down there, it seems to me to be kind of intuitive to be better with the suggestion of the caller and the music kind of goes together with the air. But I find it to be practical. And um, where did that come from anyway that you wanted the radio for the rest of the time in the day? Okay, so do you want to brought up that there's music playing in the dining room? I can bring this topic up to the dining team themselves. That is not something that we in programming control. The only time I play music myself in the dining room, when we're having a theme dinner, you know, something like that, um, then I'll, I'll try to play music that matches that theme. And so that would be Shantae or picking out that music. I know they have been playing some jazz down there in the dining room. So if you do have thoughts about it, I can pass those along. Joanna was saying she thinks it's nice for coffee and cookies, but during dinner she likes to hear people talk. Okay. I'll pass it along, Joanna. Thank you. Oh, no, I'm not taking Norm's place. I am not Norm. I just have a programming hat <laughs> Just program. 
So, so Miliana, Okay, Miliana asked if we could look into getting a clock in the dining room, bringing up that there's a, a time frame for everybody to have their meals, and saying it'd be very helpful to have a clock that people would be able to see and know when their dining time is finishing up. So I'm taking notes of these dining comments. Okay, Nina. I will direct that to the front desk, yes. Okay, Jesse. Hi, uh, a little input to follow along with Jesse said that uh, he likes the music in the dining room, but he thinks that there's many, many people in this community that it should be a group decision. Again, I am not the one that is in charge of the music in the dining room, so I will not make any call one way or the other, that it will take notes. I'm taking the notes on that. Clarice. Regarding that, from the last uh, um, service associate meeting, there was a considerable amount of discussion about I'm going to repeat what was said, but then let's table the music discussion for today. Um, so Clarice, she is our board president. She said that at the last resident association meeting, there was a lot of discussion about the music, and then at the last community meeting, I was not here at the last community meeting, so I apologize for not having the full information, but it's just that the compromise for people that do enjoy music or don't enjoy the music was that it should be played at breakfast and not at dinner. That, that is a compromise. Again, Norm will be here tomorrow. He's just not here today. So I will bring these notes to him and we will make sure that the music is played to the agreed upon times. Any non-music in the dining room questions? No? Okay, well then have a fabulous rest of your day, everyone. Good to see you all. Thank <laughs> you.